it's like at one point I did that and it was like only five hours later when we opened that first song, like to do some overdubs, all the files were blank. Oh my God. And I kind of, How did- I kind of had a feeling that it was my fault, but I, I didn't admit it at first. But it was quite horrifying. It was also like really young and you feel really bad for that. But you never, ever, ever do it again, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. So how did you how did you handle the situation? Like you just I guess you guys just had to retrack it. Uh yeah, I think they, they had eventually we talked about it with the studio owner and he gave them like extra time uh at a different date. So they could re-record it, and that was that, I guess. It still kind of sucked, but yeah, but yeah, but you learned a valuable lesson. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm lucky I didn't get fired for that. But you know, I did. I was like, it was, I think, a month in or something, and I had, I was just like over my head. I'm sure I could imagine if I was in that position, I also would have been like, I would have been stressed out of my mind. Yeah, yeah. It builds character, though. It's good. It does. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I'm such a perfectionist and like I think that's been like my biggest thing that's held me back honestly is like me being a perfectionist and having to do everything right and instead of like just failing a little bit and learning lessons and moving on and actually getting better like you said it builds character like it's good to fail a little bit and I I wish that I had known that I wish I still knew it (laughs) to this day I I wish I I could internalize that more you know yeah I was always like really jealous I had I had a super talented friend uh who I worked with, and he never, never feared, like, failing. He didn't. He just didn't care. He usually, even if it was stuff he didn't know how to do, he had, like, the confidence that it would be fine, and, you know, worst comes to worst, he'd do it again, he'd ask for some help or something. And I never could, like, I couldn't do that when I was younger. I really had, yeah. I had, you know, I had to have everything be perfect, and I had to prepare a lot in advance, and that's also good. Um, yeah, and also it's probably, you know, character of, you know, it's like a character trait of a lot of people that get into this and probably a lot of people that get into probably more specifically mixing and mastering is this kind of, like, vision of perfection and, like, you know, trying to do it right. Yeah. I imagine that it's it's characteristic of us, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think, you, you, I mean, it's a good thing and people expect that out of you. you. You're in the position that you are the responsible person. You know, people trust you and you have to be, you have to own that. Um, but I wish sometimes that, you, you know, I could enjoy being uh, more free and less yeah. worried about failing. That's why I kind of like to work alone uh, at that, you know, some of the time, because I can do that when I'm alone. I, I have no, yeah. there is no failure if, if you're not, you know, there are no consequences. Wow. Yeah, I, I totally feel you. I, I resonate with that for sure. Yeah. So is, anything else you want to tell us about your approach to mixing? Uh, like, do you have, do you have templates? Do you, you know, anything else that you might want to, mm-hmm. any secret uh, weapons? <laughs> not really. Anything you want to share? I mean, I do, I do kind of have templates now, but they're not really super specific. They're more like general routing templates. And I do, right, right, right. I do enjoy, like, I don't have like a bass drum preset or a vocal preset. I don't do that. I like to keep all tracks blank and really start from, you know, what there is. But I do have, I, I do like to have a template of like effect sense or stuff like that. You know, just, yeah. just so it can be faster, just so you have a couple of different things that you, you know, you tweaked and you like and, and you can always just, you know, uh, click, double click it and, and, you know, send to a specific effect and not having to reimagine it every time. And that yeah. speeds up stuff a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and other than that, generally, you know, uh, each song is different, but I do have a general approach. Like, I do like to think of different things in regards to what their uh, function is, you know. If it's beat oriented or harmonic content or lead content or or bass, so I do kind of group stuff together in that regard um, and treat them like in that way. But other than that, it's you know it's different every time. 
You mean like in how you like um, your, you group your buses, you're saying? Yeah. Just like, you know, you can have so you can have like a general control over everything that's that's speed oriented or everything that's uh, harmonically oriented. So you can you can easily tweak that if you want. If you, you get a little you want a little more size, you can automate that in like a, a certain part of the song to have mm. a little more parallel compression on like everything that's harmonic, you know regardless of if, if it's a synth or guitar or pad or, or uh, you know, oh, vocal cool. group or everything like that. Because usually that's what, that's kind of the thing you want, you know? You just want, you want more of something and that's not, you want to have a control over the whole whole thing. Also ah, leads nice. or, or drums, yeah, all stuff like that. That works for me. Because usually it's, yeah. yeah, it's more of a general, you know, field. You want the beat louder. You want more power in it. You want it to be cleaner. You want it to be rougher, you know. Right. The di- it's like things that give you control over, I guess, like the dynamics of the song and like, you know, the relative whatever it is versus of the previous section. Right. Um, to give the song more lift and more of a direction. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Keeps people in- engaged. Yeah, you always kind of like, you know, you have this macro view of of the music or of the song and and micro and you always kind of zoom zoom super specifically inside something and then zoom out and you have to be always in both places, you know, to get it to go. You can't really just be too detail oriented and miss something big. And you can't just be like big picture thing because then, you know, it could be not as articulate or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's like the balance that's tough. Like that's that's just I guess only time can get you better. Like I don't know. Like just like in anything. Like if you're balancing a couple things at once, like you just the only way to get better at it is to do more of it. Mm-hmm. You know, like even like for me, like this podcast. Like it took me like probably forty or fifty episodes to get to become like a good interviewer. Um, yeah. And like you know, keep keep track of the questions, but also engaged in the conversation because it's like it's like two separate things. Right. You, you know. So like the big picture and the small picture. You know. Of the of the mix, like the forest and the yeah, trees. Yeah, really that's pretty similar. Like, actually, it's just yeah. it's just time. It's just time. Yeah, experience. You know, failing, whatever. <laughs> yeah, failing. Let's yeah. learn to fail a little bit more, and then uh, <laughs> totally work our ways back up. Yeah. Can you talk to me a little bit about uh, how you failing. meet? Uh, well, no, no, not failing, but how you meet. Uh, you know, the artists that you work with, and and how you know how you get work, and how you stay busy, and and yeah. Wow. I'm not really sure how I get work. I just kind of do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I try really hard to take everything I do seriously and not, you know, whether it's a big artist or a small artist, I really want to make the best out of what, what the situation is. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, it's all relationships. You know, it's all people that had a good time working with you and that, enjoyed the process and it's not all about like what you did or you know what you brought to the table sometimes it's how how you you manage to get the best out of them how comfortable they felt how the dynamic was uh, between you both or whatever so it's just you know making sure that that everything goes according to plan that it's pleasant that the music goes where it should um you know, and, and usually if you do that, then, then people come back or, you know, people hear stuff they liked or people hear that you're not a horribly difficult person to work with. And, and they think, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe that guy, that guy is probably, he, uh, someone told me he's nice or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think you can't, yeah. be, you can't be a dick for too long. So that's my main tip. Yeah. Not to be a dick. Not to be that's a dick. That's like the... Yeah, to quote uh, Andrew Sheps on uh, on the Working Class Audio podcast, which is oh really? Podcast. He said that. He said like the number one thing I would say is don't be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and yeah, and it, it's so true. You know, maybe nice guys finish last in high school, but nice yeah. guys and, ga- and gals can 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 uh, you know have a longevity in this career. I think. I you think know. so. I think it's more important. I think there is a place for like ego. Uh, in terms of what it what it helps you do like you have to be really confident at something you have to really feel it and think you're doing something great Um, but it is more important to be open to what other people think and and to try to be you know to have empathy 
like to really feel if people sense a song a different way than you and to be able to connect to that. Like even if you heard something in a certain way and, you know, to be able to, to let that go and just go in a different direction and really do it, not just do it because someone else tells you they like it, but really try to feel it like they feel it. And if you can do that, if you can connect with different point of views, um, then I think you'll do fine. You know, because yeah. everyone's different. And it's really, it's really that, you know, I, when I was younger, I used to be a lot more ego driven, you know, this has to be that and that's good and that's not good and that's bad. And, and, uh, only this is, is good and everything else sucks, which I think a lot of people are like that when they're very competitive and, you know, and, and driven or whatever, but everything good I've ever done, uh, has happened because other people were, were there and they have different opinions and, And at the end of the day, uh, something happened that was the sum of everyone who was in the room. And it wasn't one specific person's like vision. Wow. Um, I love that so much. That is such a great takeaway for the the listeners of the show is, and cool. you know, this is, yeah, yeah, no. And, and like, I'm, I'm certainly guilty of this, of like, just, you know, trying to go at it alone. And it's, it's all from an ego place. It's all from an immature place of, of saying like, ah, no, I got this. I'm the, I'm the shit. But you're not, you know, and and, and like it, it really is true. Like if you let other people in and see how much more that could add to your ideas and how much your ideas can add to their ideas, then, you know, I, I was just I was just telling this on one of the uh, an episode that just dropped. I think it's like it's like the Beatles effect, you know, like think about the Beatles versus the individual solo careers. Right. Of, totally. Of like, you know, they're good records. Don't get me wrong. You mm -hmm. know, but they're not Beatles records. Mm hmm. You know, yeah, or like the I think I called it the Simon and Garf. I think it's this week's the episode that just re uh, got released this I'll, week is like the I'll, Simon and Garfunkel <laughs> effect. You know, cool. <laughs> well, however you want to think of I'll, it, I'll have however to check it out. It. I totally yeah, will. yeah, yeah. So that's a great takeaway for the audience. So thanks for for, for sharing that. Sure, sure. Happy to do it. Do you want to jump into the sauce segment? We didn't actually pick a song in advance. All but, right, uh, we could just decide on one right now, and then. I'll, do you th do you want to do one of these a collective songs? Is that cool for you? Sure. Yeah. Why not? I love a collective. You know, they're my guys. I spend a lot of time with them. I grew up with them, like professionally. You know, and it's a, it's a really large group of very talented people. So I'm very grateful I I could be a part of that, and I learned a lot from these people. Hopefully, they would say the same, but you might yeah, have to I ask them. <laughs> Sounds like they would. Yeah. Um, do you think they'd be okay with us playing like a snippet on the on the podcast? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. All right. So, so I really like the second track on this record. There's a rec the, the record called "The Coming of Light" that you mixed. Oh, yeah, the last uh, one. Yeah. And, and um, yeah, so let's just pop that on real quick. We'll listen to like 90 seconds, and then we'll chat about you know what was involved in it. Cool. Is that so cool? which which I which track is the second track? I don't even have it numbered. I think. L E L E, I think it's pronounced Lele. Oh yeah, that's that's actually ukulele. I, I really love that track too. Oh, sick. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna play it in real time right. uh, and just have a, re a new listen to it, and uh, and then we'll talk about it. All right. I, I, I really wanna let you know it's neither wrong or right. Turn her bound and hit the cold If we keep it dry If we keep 